Hello and welcome to Not Fake News. Today we have an article out of Liberty Writers News by Lindsey Bruce. Whoa, how it's done just there President Trump in the back with friends like this. Who needs enemies? I personally, I read this article and my opinion is either this was never said by uh, Howard Stern, or Howard Stern is completely lying, or not lying, he's just wrong. It's see how Howard Stern is giving his opinion, and his opinion makes no sense. And you'll see that in a little while. President Trump has known famous shock jock Howard Stern for years and considers him a good friend. But on the radio show yesterday, Stern surprised everyone by saying some very negative things about Trump's presidency. Most shocking, perhaps, was when Stern said that Trump was only running as a joke, to get money. Now let me stop you right there. Trump spent $600 million of his own money to become president well, you know, in his campaign. And, he'd, and he stopped all business dealings with his business. It doesn't sound like somebody who's doing something jokingly to make money. You don't spend almost a billion dollars to make money, uh, to to get a job that pays you four hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, let me start there. He says, "I think it started out like kind of a cool, fun thing to do in order to get a couple more bucks out of NBC, nothing but crap, for The Apprentice." And I actually do believe that," Stern said. He just wanted a couple more bucks out of NBC, and that's why Donald is calling for voter fraud investigations. He's pissed that he won. He still wants Hillary Clinton to win. He's so effing pissed, he's hoping that he can find some voter fraud and hand it over to Hillary. That's out absurd. Keep in mind, Trump spent millions of his own money during the campaign, so Stern's accusations don't even make sense. The radio host went on to question Trump's integrity on serious issues like abortion. I remember saying to him when he was announced his presidency, I remember being quite amazed because I remembered him being for Hillary Clinton, Stern added. I also remembered him being very, I mean, he was pro-abortion. So the new Donald Trump is kind of surprising me. Liberals are already sharing the interview like crazy, claiming that this is proof that Trump isn't who he claims to be and his presidency was nothing but a joke and that got out of hand. In all fairness, Howard Stern did show concern for his friend, saying that this presidency was, wasn't good for his health. I personally wish that he'd never run. I told him that because I actually think that this is something that's going to be detrimental to his health too. Because he wants to be liked, he wants to be loved, Stern said. He wants people to cheer for him. I don't think it's going to be a healthy experience. And by the way, he's now on his anti-Hollywood kick. He loves Hollywood, first of all. He loves the press. He lives for it. He loves people in Hollywood. He only wants to hobnob with them. That's not true. That is not true. All of this hatred and stuff directed towards him, it's not good for him, his health, it's not good. There is good reason for every president who leaves the office that has they have gray hair. There is a reason. Yeah, there's a reason. And that's kind of true. I know how it's done job is to say controversial things. But if he claims to be Donald Trump's friend, he sure as hell isn't acting like it. No, he's not acting like it. And my question is, who bought you off, Howard? Okay, next question. Next uh, article here out of Liberty Writers News by Lindsey Bruce. Trump just gave all Christians the gift of a lifetime no president has ever done, ever anything like this. Donald Trump isn't just fulfilling the promises he made during the campaign, he's crushing them. Trump just announced that he's going to change a rule that had churches around the country living in fear that if they speak out about a political figure, they will be attacked by the government. President Trump will be repealing the Johnson Amendment, which bans public charities, including churches, from campaigning for or against a candidate for elected office. Among these freedoms is the right to worship according to your own beliefs. That is why I will get rid of 
and totally destroy the Johnson Amendment and allow our representatives of faith to speak freely and without fear of retribution. Trump said, I will do that, remember. Trump said, I will do that, remember. This move will give back give a voice back to the churches who have been attacked by left-wing policies and an abusive IRS. Franklin Graham, son of American preacher Billy Graham, was a victim of the Johnson Amendment. Graham faced IRS investigations for his organization Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelical Evangelist Association. He wrote to President Obama in 2013 to complain Mr. Graham said, I believe that somebody, someone in the Obama administration was targeting and attempting to intimidate us. He wrote, this is, um, this is morally wrong and someone, and some would call it un-American. Trump promised during his campaign to give churches their voice back. And that is exactly what he's doing. Thank you, President Trump. And God bless you for this. This is a good guy, everyone. Trump is the real deal. And finally, our last article is from PJ Media, from Deborah Hine, Tucker Carlson to Milo. Media coverage of violent Berkeley riot had a subtext of "You deserve it, Milo." Conservative firebrand Milo Yiannopoulos appeared on Fox News with Tucker Carlson. Thursday night to talk about the violent rioting that shut down his speaking event at UC Berkeley the night before, and how the media coverage of the incident seemed to legitimize the violence. The two began by discussing the police response, or lack thereof. Questions have emerged in the media regarding police tactics during the protest that allowed it to devolve into a full-blown riot resulting in massive property damage, injuries, and only one person being arrested. Via CBS, constantly broadcasting shit out of San Francisco, when asked why police didn't move in to stop the rioties, University Berkeley spokesman Dan Mogloff replied, Police tactics are driven on a campus by need, the non-negotiable need to protect our students and ensure their well-being. University officials said police decided to stay back and protect and prevent injury, innocent, injuring innocent protesters by bystanders who have been cut hurt if officers waded into the crowd. Again, I'm going to repeat that. University officials said police decided to stay back to prevent injuring innocent protesters and bystanders who have been hurt if officers waded in on the crowd who could have been hurt. Yiannopoulos' acknowledges that the police didn't seem to be doing very much beside hiding inside the building, as he described his now harrowing escape. Carlson found it fascinating that the police did not come to his defense in any meaningful way. The video proves it. You're affirming it now. Why? Carlson asked. Yiannopoulos said it, he wasn't sure why the police stood down, but noted that the, may, the mayor of Berkeley was sort of gleefully egging the protests on. He pointed out that the left habitually smear conservatives with labels like white supremacist to legitimize political violence against them. That, that, is, what Major, that is what Mayor Aragwin did when he characterized Yellenopolis as a bigot who engages in hate speech and isn't welcome at Berkeley just prior to the event. Jesse Augerin, the mayor, says, using speech in a tweet, using speech to silence marginalized communities and promote bigotry is unacceptable. Hate speech isn't welcome in our community. Oh, but let's get the Black Lives Matter in next week. In a statement on Thursday, which was later react, retracted, the mayor called Yulianopolis a white supremacist. The lieutenant governor of California put out an even more obnoxious statement calling the Breitbart editor a white supremacist late in the day Thursday. Late in the day Thursday. Then Thursday night there's riots. Hmm. Statement from Lieutenant Governor regarding free speech at the University of California. See this here? You can read it here if you want. You can read that. Maybe you can see it better.
Gavin Newstrom tweets, Hatred has no home on California's public university campuses in any way or form, from vitriol to violence. Yelianopoulos blamed the media and CNN in particular for using appalling language to describe anyone even slightly conservative in order to delegitimize them. Milo Yiannopoulos is trying to convince colleges that hate speech is cool, says CNN constantly. Clinton, nah, anyway. Carlson read a, Carlson read a number of headlines from the media that painted Yiannopoulos as diversive, a procurer, provocateur, and a white supremacist, arguing that the press coverage of the violent riot Wednesday night contained the subtext of, you deserve it. He pointed out that only one liberal he knew of came to Milo's defense. That's right. Trying to halt freedom of speech. Can't let that happen. And that's it for, to, for this video. Comment below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And click the bell because Yahoo made it a mandatory that you need to click the bell in order to get the 30 to 40 different videos that we make here every day. Uh, give us a like. We really appreciate those likes and share this with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much and thanks for joining us here at Not Fake News.